James Kaufman, World News Report, today, July 30th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been waiting for this powerful, cannibal, geomagnetic storm, solar storm, yet nothing has occurred. We saw a total of three hours of a KP5 G1 geomagnetic disturbance storm last night between the hours of 10 and 1 a.m. I will show you that very light impact. You can see that here exactly a KP5 being a G1 geomagnetic storm. Since then, nothing has occurred. Let's take a look at their forecast and see what the real space weather and plasma look like. Over to our Discover satellite, here is that geomagnetic storm, the KP5 G1 geomagnetic storm that topped out at just under 15 centimeters cubed, which would really never, never actually turn out to be a geomagnetic storm. Uh, I've seen plasma much higher than that. There's been nowhere near a KP5 G1 geomagnetic storm, and so have you. Notice that our shields are down through this entire time period of the impact, which is very, very strange here. We also have solar winds jumping up from 323 up to 500 kilometers per second. Remember, plasma is supposed to be created by a coronal mass ejection or a filament eruption, whereas coronal winds are said to be created by a coronal hole in the canopy of our sun. So what we see here are very light plasma striking Earth and heavier solar winds, but nowhere near solar wind or geomagnetic storm levels. We can see the pop in uh, our temperature here that indicates this was a real event. You can see our shields finally rise here. And plasma stays, well, just over and just below the 10 centimeters cubed level. And it's popped down to as low as 0.62. Solar winds have stayed below 500 kilometers per second all day long. There has been no, no geomagnetic storm or disturbance all day long. Besides, maybe this initial hit that just barely made it into geomagnetic territory or geomagnetic storm territory or solar storm territory. Now, if you recall, this was updated yesterday by NOAA and it shows that we're supposed to get hit by more than 60 up to maybe 70 centimeters cubed of plasma midday on the 30th. Nothing like that even close to occurred. Then they have a second impact, maybe a third impact here that's over 35 centimeters cubed. Again, nothing like that has occurred, although the timing may be off. And then they have solar winds here that go up to about 500 kilometers, maybe a little bit higher than that, maybe 600 kilometers per hour. Uh, and we've seen solar winds jump up, not quite as high as they have them. But again, coronal mass ejections and filament eruptions should be plasma. Maybe solar winds are pushed out in front of that plasma and sped up to high levels, but that's not what we're seeing here. Remember, coronal winds are caused by coronal holes in our sun, the dark holes in our canopy. So this forecast is completely wrong. Over to the EESA, they also have us going up to about 70, 65, 70 centimeters with another hit. Almost looks exactly like the NOAA space weather prediction model here, except for that second hit is a little bit less intense at about 27 centimeters cubed. They have solar winds popping up to, I guess, around 425. We know they've gone to 500 they don't have them actually reaching 500 until about the first here so again what happened to all the chrome mass ejections that were emitted visually 
earth directed by our sun? This is a question I ask you. What is going on here? Now, one cannot forget about these three intense days of both M-class solar flares and an X-class solar flare, all directly Earth-facing, all with visible halo coronal mass ejections, yet Earth has not been hit by any plasma or substantial solar winds according to our KP indexes and according to our Discover satellite, our real-time space weather wind satellite. What is going on here? Now, NOAA has updated their story, and they're talking about that same sunspot that produced the X-14 solar flare coming around the limb. They're just not telling you that. It flared. It was the source of the M6 solar flare, just as I told you it was yesterday, with an R2 radio blackout. Get ready, because that one's going to be serious. But they're still sticking with their geomagnetic storm watches now continued to August 1st. We have a watch from July 30th today through August 1st. We're looking for a G3 first, followed by a G2. Several coronal mass ejections will likely reach Earth, Earth and lead to increased geomagnetic activity. A number of complex sunspot groups are present on the visible solar disk and solar activity has increased to include an R3 strong solar flare Sunday evening. They're talking about this one coming around the limb. An R3 strong, that's a radio blackout, solar flare Sunday evening. A number of coronal mass ejections have been associated with the increased activity, and at least four of these have anticipated Earth-directed components, i.e. coronal mass ejections, with possible arrivals beginning Tuesday on into Thursday, and geomagnetic storm watches were issued accordingly. G3 for the 30th today, a G2 for the 31st of July, and a G2 for August 1st. Then they go into a bunch of rubbish about Aurora Borealis and visibly being able to see it, which really no one cares about, although it is radiation pouring in our poles. Ladies and gentlemen, they've actually called out today, July 30th, the day that we should get hit by the strongest cannibal coronal mass ejection. That means two or more coronal mass ejections have merged. And I think I saw it from the forecast charts. They don't have anything forecasted for the 31st or the 1st on the ESA or NOAA's forecast chart as of today. But they've added a G2 possibility for the 31st and 1st all of a sudden. Although the day is technically almost over and nothing has occurred. This is another freak show. Why does every solar flare that happens on the backside create a huge coronal mass ejection and why, when we even visually see coronal mass ejections that are halo ejections coming towards Earth, why are we never hit via the models we're given by these, well, geomagnetic storms and solar storms? I ask of you, please leave it in the comments below. Is this another psych app? We know it's a slush fund. Please share, subscribe, and always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.